Okay, making sure we're live on Twitch. We are, okay. This is Fireside Chat number 280. Not a ton to go over. Um, been pretty excited. Oh, why does our post not have the actual channel link? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Or rather, have the splash. Let's see what happens if I post. Okay, just doesn't have it. That's cool. Had the Warriors of Icer kind of preview and logo before, and now it just has a dumb Twitch logo and nothing. Anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, we're still kind of prepping for the uh, platoon switchover. Um, I think we are going to be ready to do it. Um, as far as I can tell, I think we're pretty much on track. Um, shout out to um, a few different officers the last week or so and trainees and such. Um, just globally, we've just made a ton of progress as far as getting people trained up and certified with platoons and also just officer training. Um, congrats to Zisticus and Conegramir, who are both new warrant officers, both new arrivals in the all thing. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, some new COs and... Uh, yeah, I think overall we're getting pretty well ready as far as just getting everyone platoon certified. Um, I kind of pioneered, tried out a new uh, thing where basically um, we don't actually need to be in voice for the platoon certification. I just sort of set it up such that people can do it on their own time. Um, and uh, Benner and Foldmather both did that, um, which was quite cool. So they are both certified now. Starvald is certified. Um, so I think almost everybody that is leading a platoon or will be leading a platoon potentially is kind of ready to go on that. Um, and we're trying to get officer training done for everybody as well. So, yeah. Um, beyond that, let's see. Yeah, I mean, just kind of talking about the... Uh, I mean, basically what I would call it is kind of a roster change, basically. Um, when I say platoon changes, that's basically what we're talking about. Um, we have a new version 2 roster set up, and the uh, idea basically is that it's organized by games, which is just um, more useful for us. And then the house information is still there, but rather than the roster having a different sheet for each house, instead... Uh, the roster has a different sheet for each game, and then people's individual rows under their primary game list their house, which is uh, kind of closer to how we did it, like, way back. Um, not even way back. I mean, when Warbands were around, you know, a few years ago. And uh, certainly, I think it's more so how we did it uh, back in, like, Third Fleet, Early Second Empire era as well. So it's kind of a tried and tested method. And, yeah, um, I think it's going to be nice, um, but honestly, the roster organization is kind of a secondary thing to um, the primary thing we're trying to do is kind of just give more power and responsibility to platoon leaders. So um, try to encourage people more to start platoons and to kind of give them the capability to um, act on their own more so, like being able to promote people, not being uh, stuck so much to the... Uh, the review cycle. I mean, we're still kind of keeping that because we're asking the platoon leaders to do the review by the end of the month, and that's kind of how it'll work. But uh, the um, the thinking is that you can promote and demote people at any time if you're a platoon leader, up to uh, and including the rank of Master Chief Petty Officer, which is the maximum rank for a rough platoon leader. So that's kind of the idea with that. Is just that I think that things tend to work better if you just have uh, that responsibility um, split up into more people's hands and the people who actually play a given game are then interacting regularly with the people who play that game and they're also the ones in charge of promoting and demoting those people, reminding them about roll call, uh, so on and so forth. And I think that that is... A good setup and something we used for a long time. I think um, I'd have to go back and read some discussions or such, like why it's set up the way it is currently. I think it makes some sense in that um, we wanted somebody very qualified um, doing the review and we wanted to kind of do it collectively 
to try to uh, make it more neutral and unbiased so people aren't just like promoting their buddies in their platoon. But um, so it's kind of a trade off either way. But I, I think having it in the platoon leader's hands makes more sense. And I'm not really scared about platoon leaders promoting people, you know, like faster or whatnot because they're their friends or something. I mean, first of all, it would be pretty obvious that that's being done because we can see everyone who's promoted to demoted. So somebody could very easily just spot that and say, okay, this person was promoted without meeting the requirements. And that would be a pretty easy fix. And it wouldn't be the end of the world either. Um, and I think B, just having platoon leaders have that ability is just nicer. I mean... A lot of times, I think something that happens is we get newer members, they get really excited, and that flame sort of fades away a bit because they don't really have a clear path to, uh, like, actually utilize that and really take part in WA. It's more of just, okay, I'm going to sit around for a month and get promoted to Marine, I'm going to sit around for a month and get promoted to Gunner, and, and that kind of treatment just essentially just wastes people's energy and motivation because those early months are when they want to be able to do something. So I think letting somebody who's pretty new uh, run a rough platoon, if their idea sounds solid and they, you know, basically make a decent pitch um, is a good idea and a good method. And uh, allowing that I think is good. And that's something that WA always did. Even knowing that most of those rough platoons will not actually pan out, they could bring in a good recruit or two. They could potentially pan out. And I think that sort of that, path and potential being available to everybody is something that generally appeals to most people in WA and I think it appealed to me uh, many years ago too so um, as far as all the rough platoons I started I mean so yeah I think uh, having that back and really um, you know letting people do that uh, is a is a good idea um, it doesn't change the fact that we still have, you know, the rest of the Admiralty and COs, et cetera, oversight and everything. Um, it just means that rather than necessarily the top level people having to do everything instead, um, I think it makes more sense to have the lower level, you know, kind of boots on the ground leaders doing more and then having that support and oversight from above, um, to try to help them if possible. And that's kind of part of the platoon leadership certification thing. You know, I think uh, in the past people have complained a lot about having certifications, but uh, I think this makes a lot of sense because really all it is, is if we want you to be able to run a platoon, we want you to start a platoon and run it. But in order to do that, you need to know how to do certain things. So you need to know how to promote and demote people. So that's essentially what the certification is, is we are trying to teach you how to do all that stuff so that you can do whatever you want. Um, of course, well, not whatever you want. Promote and demo people according to the rank requirements, not just because you feel like it. But uh, ideally, um, you will, platoon leaders hopefully will feel more empowered to um, make decisions um, because they have that uh, power and capability for, to promote and demote people. They're reviewing the people in their own platoon. Um, it also, I think, makes it easier because we'll see. I think that's one of the big steps that we're going to have to do is dividing people up into platoons. Um, and I mean, it's, if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world because it isn't like before where we're sort of assigning you an individual private channel that you'll be part of. Um, you know, many people, most people probably will not notice a difference with their platoon. The only thing they'll have to notice is we are going to ask you to put your platoon in your roll call. So you have to know that. But for many people, roll call is kind of a copy-paste kind of situation anyway. So I don't know that they'll fully process it, but I like having that just so that it's sort of maybe in people's minds a bit that, oh, I am in a platoon and knowing what a platoon is. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, kind of the idea is to uh, to do that. And then instead of having, you know, individual people, um, I mean, for a while we would have somebody doing the whole of house deputy, the whole of house commander, which is just kind of too much. I mean, it's, it's possible. We have people that, you know, did a lot of hard work. Obviously, Ulfwald was doing basically the entire review for quite a long time. I mean, which is just super impressive, but essentially what he's doing is just putting in a bunch of time and work for it. And it's sort of like, I feel like we're kind of wasting that time and effort because uh, it's just it becomes just kind of this monthly thing where it's just sort of checking requirements and 
it's not feasible to make any extra effort for individual people. And the hope is that if you're running a platoon, you're actually going to be interacting with the people you're promoting and demoting. So you're going to kind of be encouraging them to be active or minding them to post a roll call, that kind of stuff, basically trying to give individuals a helping hand, which is something that we can't do when we have one guy doing everything. <laughs> it's just not, it's not realistic. So having platoon leaders in charge of doing that kind of thing, um, I think makes more sense. And it's kind of something we wanted platoon leaders to do previously, but in practice, it's just hard because they don't really know who they're supposed to reach out to. It, everything just kind of boils down to events the way it is right now. You just host events, and if somebody shows up, sure. But how do you actually get people to show up? How do you get people who are kind of not showing up to events anymore? They're kind of drifting away. How do you get those people back? You know, it, it's kind of hard. It's all very, very vague the way it is right now because it's kind of like, well, I don't know who I'm supposed to reach out to. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's going to other events or something. But if somebody is literally in your platoon, now they're very clearly your responsibility. And instead of having some vague number of 10, 20, 30 people that you maybe should be thinking about, you might have just a specific list roster that you can see, you can view anytime, you can use the bot command to look at the roster on Discord, or you can look at it on Google, uh, the Google Sheets, the roster, and you can see, okay, these are my seven people, and I can keep track of them, I can review them, I know what they're all doing, I talk to them regularly. And that's going to be, I think, much better for just member retention, increasing activity and interest and everything across the board, I think. Um, yeah, hopefully. We'll see. I mean, maybe optimistic, but uh, I think I think it'll be a good change. And we've been talking about it a lot. And I think most people feel fairly good about it or at least neutral, <laughs> which is fine. So, yeah, kind of excited for it. And I, I think we are on track time wise uh, for the March 15th rollout. Um Probably what we'll do is once March hits, so maybe after starting with that officer meeting in March, which will be uh, March 2nd, we'll kind of spend that next week-ish or so organizing everyone into the platoons. And then, um, yeah, March 15th, we'll kind of roll it out. And the first task for those platoon leaders will be a bit of a, of a busy month for them. But their first task will be to kind of introduce themselves to the people in their platoon who probably will know them already, but maybe not. Um, and try to make sure that everyone posts their roll call and posts it correctly. Um, now, because it rolls out March 15th, people will have already posted roll call without the platoons in them. So you won't necessarily need to like tell people, oh, go back and edit your roll call and add your platoon or something. I don't think we'll bother with that. I think it will more be so... We'll start with, in March, platoon leaders introducing themselves and just making sure everyone in their platoon has posted roll call. That's all. And then, perhaps, you know, towards the end of March or whenever it works for the platoon leaders, they will be reminding them, hey, for the April roll call, post your platoon. You're going to post this information here in your roll call as well. And then kind of working on that throughout April. Um, so that end of March, April 1st kind of area will be the first time the platoon leaders officially do their own situation reports and roster review. Many of them have already done this already at this point, but this will be the first time they do it with um, a specific roster in mind and uh, the ability to promote and demote people themselves and so on. So that will be kind of exciting to see. Um, hopefully everything works. We get all the uh, roll calls and uh, review done on time at the end of March. So that's kind of what the timeline looks like. Um, and I'll probably lay that out in more detail in Command Center and such in the future. But yeah, that'll about do it. I'll be around for office hours shortly.